It's that time again, everyone. Yeah. It's it's the Santa ride, the Husky Santa ride. Yeah. Happy Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Woo! Let's get on it. <laughs> I'm the daddy. These guys are, yeah, a bit younger. <laughs> but I feel like them tonight. <laughs> Let's have fun, guys. <laughs> Here we go, we've got, we got Trace and we've got Ellen, original founding member, co-member of the Santa Ride, yes! I'm a member by association. <laughs> Ellen's been a member, Ellen's done just about everyone as well except for the first one. Got Dickie over here, Zach, <laughs> Sophia, Maxie and Caitlin, look at this! Alright, here we go, it's on! Dangerous part's filming it. Oh, that's a different <laughs> <laughs> Holy dooly, there's actually quite a lot of people here tonight. Oh, shit. Check this out. Yes. Happy Christmas, Trace. So this event raises about uh, five or six thousand bucks for our bushfire brigades because our government doesn't give it to us. But... Uh, yeah, here we go. There's like 500, I think, today riding to the Husky Pub for a beer. So the pub's going to be pretty busy in a minute. But uh, that money gets raised and gives our bushfire brigade, and uh, everyone gets to have a beer and a sausage. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, introduce you here to Mr. Abel Walsh. Hey, Hello, hey. buddy. Hey, Rossi. How are you? Good, mate. I'm good. Uh, well done for putting the Santa ride together again, buddy. Oh, we got it on again. Only well just done. this time. I oh, know. Bloody insurance, eh? What a <laughs> lot of bullshit. But well done, mate. And I think we got 450 tickets sold. So. 450 people at 15 bucks a head. There's a bit of money for the fireys, yeah, eh? Yeah. I reckon there's 550 people riding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot of people come for the free, and then they... I don't know whether they're going to get a free beer, though, eh? Nah, it's all good. Whatever. All right, it's all mate. Good cause, all a bit of fun. All great, mate. How many years so, is this for you? This is my 14th straight year, mate, without a miss. Well, officially it's only been on 13 years, so... So this is the 14th one. <laughs> yeah, 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 13 yeah, years, yeah. 14 Santa rides. I've counted every one of them, and uh, yes. Nice work. I could be a drunk ride home tonight, I reckon, mate. Safe way, as always. Good on you, mate. I'm going to head off. This is the Peloton. I'm gone. See you, Abe. Thanks, mate. So I'm back with my team, my young team, just for a little while until I go flitter around and chat with other people. It's just so social. I love that. Let's see. Okay, so I've got the bow bulkhead. This is the main compression bulkhead for the bow of the boat. I've lifted it up here onto these wing frames here. I was wondering how I was going to laminate this. I really didn't want to lift it back into the factory because of the weight of it. I'm going to attempt to laminate this bulkhead here in place. <laughs> I'm probably going to move it forward so I can um, get around to this back side of it, but that's about a 10 foot drop down in there. But I should be able to just laminate this right here, leave it, flip it over the next day, come back and uh, and, and basically we do the other side all in one piece. It's actually not that big. It's probably going to take me a good hour to do this and, uh, and it'll be done for good and then I can basically glass it in place. I was remembering we had a scarf that Ed and Deb helped me do back in January and uh, those scarfs were epoxied together. Um, I do have some remnant epoxy laying around on the top of that, um, that scarf, so I'm gonna need to sand that off because I'm actually laminating with vinyl ester. So I don't want to go interrupting that chemistry and basically because it's uh, been cured for several months, basically there's like a little line of epoxy. I'm gonna sand that right out. All I want to do is make sure the scarf is held together with the epoxy and the rest will be done with the vinyl ester. So I'm gonna get in and sand that now with my roller sander. It's only gonna take five minutes because I've only really got two scarves to deal with here.
So I've just had a massive clean up here. I've vacuumed it. I've basically sanded all the edges of this uh, plywood to make sure that that end grain is going to get enough resin in it. Now there is going to be a bit dripping down onto the floor here. Not overly concerned about that because I'm going to give all this a sand out anyway. But um, one five metre piece of uh, of 600 double bias laminated on there, a bit of peel ply, and it's done. And then I'm just going to flip it over again tomorrow afternoon. After I finish the first one, I'll come back about three hours later, flip it over, do the other side, and that bulkhead is complete. And now, the only problem I have here is that uh, this floor needs to be glassed down. So I'm at a commitment point now. I need to basically commit to put this floor down to be able to get this bulkhead in. Once that's in, I can then start to tab along all these wing frames because I know they're in the right position and then move uh, very quickly forward. Uh, we've just hit 28 degrees in here, so it's sort of touch and go as to whether I should get ahead with it because the catalyzing is gonna happen really quickly here. So I'm gonna slow it right down to about one to one and a half percent. I'm not gonna uh, jack up the catalyst at all like I've done with the other modules up in the factory where it's a bit cooler, but in this, inside the tent here, we're starting to get some summer heat brewing. There is a cold change due, but it's not gonna be that cold. Uh, basically one layer of 600 all over it and then peel ply and this part's done and uh, and ready to install so pretty happy to get to this stage it's taken a long time to get to this stage and i'm ready to go now i know over the last few weeks you've had some serious uh doses of laminating but yeah you're gonna get a few more because that's pretty much the stage i'm at um, after a couple of wipe downs of uh, the plywood with acetone and a rag, I was able to remove a lot of the sawdust and uh, any sort of surface dirt that might have attracted onto that uh, onto that plywood over the, uh, the time it had been sitting in there. Then it was time for a coat of vinyl ester. I left that for around about uh, three hours to let it cure into the uh, into the uh, plywood before I came back and then added that 600 double bias and uh, you can see me here laying it out. Now the key with putting this stuff out is to trim regularly and to only do three or four feet at a time, time that you can manage uh, those parts of the surface and then I subsequently put the peel ply straight on. So I was never doing more than three or four feet at a time because I just found that in that sort of heat, it was almost curing behind me and provided you work ahead of yourself with a wet on wet surface, you can generally deal with, uh, with a large surface like this pretty much on your own. I had a little bit of help there from Johnny and uh, and then I was able to just get the peel ply down before anything had really set. But uh, you know, it really came up beautifully and I have a superior bond to that uh, plywood. Um, after trimming uh, the next day, I actually had to come back and give it a good trim and there's plenty of vision of all this uh, in, the, uh, in the coming part of the video. So as you can see by our uh, tent, it's flapping around in the wind and that end hole uh, was blowing against my laminate. So the acrobatics sort of never ended at this stage. I was climbing up and over the top of the hull and and uh, essentially that's a 10 foot drop down to the ground into a concrete slab underneath. So it's not a very uh, easy place to work with. And to be honest, I was really struggling at some stage to finish that uh, finish that part of the laminate, but it all got done and, uh, and I was able to curtail the uh, the curtain flapping eventually and uh, it was affecting the laminate and bridging it on the edges so eventually I, I tied it up and was able to deal with it. Right, uh, we laid this up about four hours ago and uh, Johnny's just come back home and put it over. Let's do it, mate. Right, uh, what do you want to do? Well, unfortunately, I cut yourself, yeah, lift it back and sit at this edge on here and then we'll just flip it over. Right. Just watch me don't take the pearl with it. Oh, hang on. I'm going to get under it and then don't do it. Yeah, that's alright. Yeah, lift it like that. I'm just going to lift it straight up. Hang on, I've got my leg in there. Right. Are you out? I'm out. Right, let's see if you can get in there. Hang on. Might have to go to you. That's it. Alright, I'm laying down. Oh, no. No, 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 no. That's it. Oh, yours. Yeah. Right. Right. 
So I had a really successful morning. Um, you think you're gonna come in and just do the other side once you flip it over. So, um, you've got to remember that because I've had this overhang here, because I couldn't get to it, um, imagine the, the, the plywood's like that and I've laid the glass and this overhang's gone like that. The problem is now when I flipped it over is that it is actually rising up and uh, it needs to now be trimmed off with, uh, with the multi-tool. And the reason why I need to trim it off is because I need to lay another layer over the top. It's going to actually bridge the laminate. Um, listen to the wind today, mate. It's in it at least it's like 60 knot bastards. Um, and my tent's not loving it, and I'm getting a bit sick of the flapping that's been going all day. But I'm going to have to trim all of this apron off here to make sure that my next laminate actually sits down and not is curled up. So a little bit of work ahead, but uh, pretty simple. I'm going to go and cut the cloth, get the peel pie ready. In the morning, I'll finish this bulkhead, and uh, yeah, moving forward. So after a good trim, uh, I think you're getting the idea. <laughs> it's. Uh, Pretty much uh, like Groundhog Day, I'm just laminating, uh, wetting out the plywood, doing more uh, laminating and then uh, putting the peel ply on and then essentially trimming again. So uh, I think you've probably seen enough of this uh, for now. There's been a fair bit of laminating going on over the last couple of episodes and, uh, and I apologise for it, but simply that's the... Uh, the tedium of, um, of doing a boat of this size is it tends to be a lot of one thing. When you're into one mode, you tend to continue on with it as much as possible. All right, guys, I'd like you to meet my mum. This is uh, Betty Boardman, my lovely mum's come down to visit. <laughs> she hasn't been here for about a year, so she, I'm, I'm not sure that mum quite knew what she was looking at before, so she just had the full tour. But I'm just going to show mum where I'm actually finished down in here. And, uh, and you guys, I don't think you've seen the completed project, but um, essentially, I'm going to lift this companion way out, show mum the fuel tank, which you have seen. Right, come in here, Dom. So, Mum, what's down in here? This is the companion way. Down in here. So, down in here, we have my sewer tank's gonna fit, and then it's all flow coated out, all finished, and then right here, these are my uh, 300 litre fuel tanks. So, pretty good, eh, Mum? Thank you, Rick. Poor, poor <laughs> Mum hasn't had a, uh, a good tour for a couple of years, so it's, uh, it's moved along a long way. I'm sure we're still not really realising what we're looking at, but it's okay. But yeah, essentially the fuel tanks go here and the black water tanks there and then right down in here we've got the, the water tanks. Oh, okay, ah, we love it. Very proud of my son. Oh, that's good, Mum. <laughs> that's good. It builds, right? Yeah. Mum found Billy and thought it was alive, thought it was once alive. She's been an animal liberationist. <laughs> <laughs> right, Billy, get down the build, Billy. Oh, Ross, stop it. Oh, really? Oh, that's where he's very, very long. Oh, you're bleeding. I know, I must have. Oh, I've caught it. No, what are you? Oh, God, it's on cut pieces. Probably. Yeah. I've got one more leg. Hang on, you're That's a bit of a challenge. <laughs> Careful, Pat. So these are all my templates. You can see the mess on me. Look at, look at the, all this here. I don't know how you know where you're at. These are all the foam core off cuts of all the foam. So I'm making it. So what I'm making the whole boat out of is this. See that? That's what the boat's made of. Uh -huh. See how flexible it is and light. Feel how light that is? Oh, yes. So what is I do so? though is I then lay two layers of glass on each side of it. And that's now, that's what the whole boat's made of, is this highly rigid foam core. So it's got buoyancy in it, it's rock proof, it's expensive, but that's all the offcuts, but I'm not throwing any of that in. I'm use these to make all the cupboards, all everything inside is gonna be made of this. I'll just step back. I don't know how you know where you're at. I don't know where you're at. Oh. The problem is I just work and I just chuck everything it in. It looks like a big jigsaw. I come in here to have a massive clean up about once every two weeks because I just have to. So building Lego had its purpose, but oh, no. didn't it, Ross? What's that done? All that time you spent building Lego yeah, had a reason. Yeah, it's all about Lego. <laughs> so you and Brett, Star Wars Lego. <laughs> so this is um. Effectively, Janet and my new sports car. The Audi I didn't get. Look, you ready for the light to shine out of this? <laughs> <laughs> <Ready>? <laughs> 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 
Wow. I know they're not that exciting, but they really are exciting. <laughs> and there's two of them. I guess so. No, careful. Oh, wow. Look at that. Mm, that is basically... That's very complex. Oh, it? unbelievable. Very complex. Yeah, unbelievable. These are what's got to be put in the back of that boat. You'll need a crane to lift them. I've got a crane. I can, I can lift them in. That's no problem. It's, but having them mounted. But that the shaft comes out the back here with the propeller, so that's got to get through the back of the boat. But they are basically the, the nuts and bolts of the whole boat. They're, they're only 57 horsepower, so they're not massive. My outboard motor is more powerful, but these are just... They are just endless machines. There. So when you're sailing, would you have two engines working at one time? You probably don't use them at all. They have the sail. Oh, we will. Sail. We'll but... use them for going in and out of port, and if there's no wind, you'll just motor along. Mm. But they're, they're not like car engines that use a lot of fuel. No. They only use two litres an hour per tank, and they only need, you only need one engine running at a time. Mm. Yeah, so I know that was a little bit of a short one, guys, and uh, you know, I'd love to put the Santa ride in it because that's just an absolutely brilliant event and, you know, it goes to a great cause, especially right now. I mean, if you're watching me right now, then you'll uh, probably have heard on the news with regard to all the fires that are burning around us. I mean, we've got fires for a 1,000 kilometres north, a 1,000 kilometres south. My hometown is just surrounded by fires. It's uh, pretty scary stuff. So that Santa ride just, you know, it gives that little bit of extra cash for them to buy, you know, uniforms or whatever they need. And it's something that, you know, we're right behind in this town and everyone has a ball and everyone's in such a good mood on that uh, Santa ride. It's a great night out and usually we all drink too much. But, and also having mum down, you know, it's it's such a great thing to have your mum come and visit and see you doing what you do and, uh, and she appreciates it. And, you know, she's just an absolute darling. Um, I want to take the opportunity to thank you guys for the last 12 months watching my channel. In fact, if you've been around for the last two years watching the channel, you know, for the fact that 12,000 people have subscribed to my channel just blows me away. I'm amazed that 12 people are interested, let alone 12,000. So, uh, Thank you guys, I appreciate it. You know, just the comments, they spur me on. They do give me a lot of uh, impetus and a lot of uh, motivation to keep going. And in the background as well, I've, I've actually started a new YouTube channel and it's, it's up there live now. However, um, it's not going to be published until the 18th of February is when the first episode goes up. So I encourage you to go and have a look, but you're not going to see much unless you're in our... Um, uh, unless you've joined our patron team, you know, at the end of the day, uh, these are going to go up three months after I have produced them to our patron site. It's just a way that I can give back to the guys that are supporting me, that are watching me and paying per video. You know, I'm incredibly grateful to everybody who watches our videos. However, if you're if you're a patron, I'm trying to put those videos out to you three months early uh, for the, I think, for one of the tiers and then a month early for the lower tier. If anything, it's my way of giving back to uh, to those of you that are supporting me. But if you want to see those videos three months early, this is the way to do it. There's two episodes up there. Essentially, that channel will delve deeply into uh, different composite technologies it's going to go into my kayak manufacturer and I'm passing it on in great detail as well and uh, taking products from the mold right through to a finished and saleable commercially available product is uh, is something that I'm passionate about and it's something that I am really happy to put out there on a video series so the composite shop guys it's uh, it's up there um, if nothing else subscribe to it uh, there's no videos uh, up open to the public right now. However, if you zip over to the Patreon channel, I'll put a link right here. You can uh, you can certainly see that it's there, and uh, and it just might spark some interest for you. It might spark some interest in making homewares or artworks or um, personal watercraft or even parts for your automobile. So at the end of the day, it's there for all to see eventually, just for the patrons right now. And uh, you know, and again. Happy Christmas, guys. Have a great new year. And I'm going to have a bit of time with the family and uh, and have a little bit of a break once I get another two or three days' work done. I'm really looking forward to catching up with my entire family. We have 35 people coming for Christmas for four days to our house. So it's going to be pretty full on. There's people in tents. There's people in the garage. I might even stick a couple up on the mould. And, uh, and I'm sure we're going to have a great time. And I hope you all have a very safe and happy Christmas. Thanks, guys. Catch you later. Bye.